Hello and welcome everybody and thank you guys for joining me again. My name is Wilkie and I'm here with a first in this series that I'd like to call Custom Maps Explained where I'm going to be talking and explaining mechanics and certain custom maps in Warcraft 3 slash Warcraft 3 Reforged. I will give you a quick TLDR in the first few seconds of these videos and if that isn't clear enough or if you have any further questions then there will be a longer explanation with some gameplay. So I will elaborate on a few things, explain some mechanics, and give you a basic rundown. So if you're new to a certain game and you're wondering how the hell things work, then this will be something for you. Anywho, without further ado, let's start the first one in this series. You're going to start the map by picking a difficulty with your risk, then you're going to proceed to build random towers with your farmer in order to beat the incoming enemies. You're going to use mechanics such as farming and fishing to get more extra gold, and the ultimate goal is to beat 40 rounds of mobs coming your way. So let's go into the detailed explanation. You start the game or the map by picking a difficulty by using your wisp and selecting one of these five circles. Obviously as a new player I highly recommend easy. Afterwards you will be having a farmer here, 875 gold which allows you to build five random towers. I highly suggest building them in this place or order as a starter. Obviously there's other choices but this will generally give you a good clear. And you don't really have to worry about a lot of other things. And this is pretty much all you can do in the first round. There is a mini game, but I'll explain that in the second round. As far as the random towers itself go, you really only can build these two towers. Obviously the one for 1500 gold is not going to be an option at the start. So this is something you'll be using early on. And in the top left corner here on the minimap, you can see all the potential towers you can get. It starts off by basic towers, which essentially is like a tier one. These are tier 2 called normal, tier 3 rare, special, superior, and then miracle. Miracle being the last one in the game, which is obviously needed in order to defeat the last wave. And this is pretty much it. As you can see, we cleared the first round. And there are going to be a few things that are different from other maps. So first of all, we get some gold. So we're going to be building another tower. Um, I guess since we just got a normal one, I can explain this. As you can see here, there's a 4% chance that we will receive a normal tower, which is a tier 2 one, or a 2% chance even to get a tier 3 tower. Also, we received 200 lumber, and with this lumber, you can start building crops. You have grapes, carrots, or pumpkins. They all work the same way, there is really no difference between like color, obviously, but mechanically, they all work the same. So I'm going to be starting off by building two grapes here. And now you can see something called Grape Mastery, and by increasing mastery you will increase the price. And the price is kind of important, and I will show you after this wave is done what this actually has to mean. So after each round, your crops get harvested automatically, so you don't really have to do anything. You just have to plant them. And afterwards, you will see a price, and there's always a price range, like a minimum price and a maximum price. This one is random, as the name suggests. So, if you didn't really catch it or you were busy doing something else, you can check on, click on the gold chest here, and you can see. So, a price of 58 is obviously very bad. A price of 47, or, uh, 74, or 76 is more or less average, so I personally wouldn't be selling them right now. I'm going to be starting over by planting some carrots, and as you can see, in the next round we will get another two grapes. So we will have four in total, and we also will get two carrots. So this is pretty much how the farming aspect works, and one use of lumber. As you can see right now, pumpkin price is now 84. This is pretty good. If I had some pumpkins, I would probably sell them. Carrots, 55, very bad, and grapes at 76. Hmm. Probably not the best choice. So let's continue by building a tower here. And I will explain to you the other minigame. Every round you start the game with five baits. And every round you will get one more bait, which is also set in the tooltip here. And what you can do with them is start the minigame by clicking the fishing rod, clicking on the water, and then hoping that your RNG is better than mine. Wow, really? So, okay, this is very unfortunate here. Finally, a minigame. You can solve this minigame by pressing D and F repeatedly in order to get items. Now, with these items, they can be something you can sell, for example, fish or wooden signboard. This one was worth 14 gold. Sometimes you also get upgrades, which I will talk about in a few seconds after we clear the, five, the fifth round. Let's build one more tower. As you can see here, carrots have almost a maximum price. This is a very good place to be in 
when you want to sell this. So right now we sold them. And then we will use the gold to build some more towers. So onto the fishing game, as I said, you will get a bait every round until the 15th round. And afterwards there will be no more baits. You will still receive lumber though. So really, essentially this is another mini game. I like to use the baits as soon as I get them. You don't have to sell them straight away because every fifth round you will not only receive an upgrade, which we'll talk about in a second, but also fishing price will increase. This is also said on the fishing route here. So let's see, once the last mob is done, we will automatically be transported to a section here where you can use your farm upgrade. Now you have crop prices increase. Right now everything sells for a maximum price of 100. So we're going to be using this one. And now everything sells for 115 gold. So the min price goes up and the max price goes up too. So in, essentially you can make more money the later on in the game you sell the game if you so choose to use the crop prices. You can use a random tower builder here, tower damage increase or miracle tower. Miracle tower as said initially are something for late game so that's not really something you want to worry on about. This is pretty much almost everything about the minigame section and upgrades and general progress. So let's go into the I guess the bigger random factor in the game because you saw all of these towers here and you may be asking yourself how the hell do you get this so how are we gonna get this is if you build two towers and they end up being the same for example these two wisps you have two options you can do an optional merge which lets you control where you want to merge this or you can just press d and it'll take a random tower and merge it into the place you currently have selected so right now we took the two wisps and we got a goblin sapper which is a tier 2 tower. Luckily we already have a goblin sapper so what I can do now is I want to upgrade this one for example so I press D again and now we have a rare one right. So we jump from wisps to sapper to a crab. And obviously this is pretty much how the whole mechanic works you just go down these tier lists until you end up being at the miracle tier which obviously takes a bit of time but is very important in beating the game because ultimately if you don't upgrade your towers you won't reach very far there's just a there is just a necessity of how the game works so 108 gold for grapes is a very good price so we're going to be selling this again and we're going to be starting out by building some more towers because round 10 is when we will be fighting the first boss so every fifth round you will get one of these upgrades here and every 10th round is going to be a boss wave. So we got another lucky pick here with the towers and we got some clockwork. So let's upgrade those. Upgrade a frog here. One of the murlocs. We got so many murlocs. What do you have here? Another frog. Okay, so we get a raider. This may seem like a lot to do, but um, essentially when you start playing the game more, this is something that becomes very intuitive. And this is also why I said I'd like to use the fishing baits as soon as I can. Because things start to get not really complicated, but there's a lot more management going on later in the game. So I highly suggest using the baits as soon as you can. If you don't want to sell the fish now because you want to wait for better prices, that's perfectly fine. Um, all you got to do is start fishing. For example like I did with a small fish here. So really, you do the mini game. And then if you don't want to sell the item, you can just right click it and drop it into the ground and then later on, for example, I can come pick it up and sell it. So that works just as fine. So we're nearing the next wave, which is going to be our first boss wave. I'm a little bit worried. So this may be a little bit difficult. Wow, the sheep was not really a good upgrade here. So let's see. It's going to be a tough call, I think. So now you can see how the walking pattern or how the, the walking mechanics of this move work. Honestly, no, I think I think we're good because uh, these towers have a good positioning here, so he will shoot most of the time on him. Though this may still be a very tough call. Either way, if we drop, we will lose. Each boss wave takes you ten life, and every normal league. Okay, that was a very close call and as you can see every fifth round so every tenth round is also going to be one of these upgrade rounds and i like to go for a crop upgrade but really this is personal preference 
Well, let's build some more crops here. And as you can see, this is how the whole map evolves. It starts out very simple and it gets not really, not necessarily complicated, uh, but a bit more managey. So let's look at the prices. Carrots have a good price and pumpkins, so we're going to be selling this. And let's build some more towers so we can start upgrading some more. So as you can see here, something popped up called Achievement Completed. If you click on this purple scroll here, you can see a bunch of achievements, which each of these top achievements here will give you 200 gold. And you always have two personal achievements. These are randomized, so these are going to be different each round you play. And by completing one of those, you will get 400 extra lumber. And this lumber can obviously be then used for crops or something I'm going to be talking about in just a second. So as you can see, towers are set up here nicely. We're going to be doing some upgrades here. Uh, we can upgrade the horse, the tower, these babies here. All right, this is looking good so far. So the last thing I want to talk about is the town hall. Now, these things here are very straightforward. These are upgrades for towers that have a specific damage type. Obviously, this one is siege. This one is piercing, another piercing tower, normal. What do you have? Siege, Chaos, uh, Magic, and I think I don't have... Uh, there is actually an Ethereal one. And later on, there's also Hero Damage. So, depending on how many towers you have of each type, it sometimes may be a smart idea to start upgrading your tower damage instead of building new towers. Especially in late game, this is a very good option to boost your damage by not worrying about um, building standard towers again in order to get some upgrades. Because if you don't have two of the same kind, you will not be able to upgrade the towers, which ultimately means you're going to be stuck with what you get. So we have a special now, so we're already down this tier here. And this is pretty much almost anything I can give you on the way with how this map works. The last thing here is you can summon small bosses. We're going to be summoning this one. Obviously, this one is very easy. It has 5000 HP. We have a lot more towers. And by summoning these bosses and killing them, you will see here reward extra wood or lumber. So by killing the small one, I got 100 more lumber, which in return, I'm going to be using to build some more crops. And this is almost everything you need to know. There's one more mechanic that will be coming important later on in the game. And that is after wave 30 or the 30th round. So very far into the game, the max rounds are 40. You will be able to buy an item which you can equip a miracle tower with so only the last tier of towers is able to equip these and they range for stuff like uh, grand attack speed to everything surrounding get a crit chance get a damage aura or something like this so this is also a very good way especially in late game when you don't really want to build crops anymore or you have no use for the lumber then buying these may be a good option but this is as i said something that only works in or after we're 30. Why is somebody calling here? And uh, yeah, pretty much as I said, this is all I can give you on the map. Uh, I hope this clears up something, um, how this map in general works, how you want to play. The last thing I want to give you in a way is the game uses a save and load mechanic. So if you manage to beat the last boss, and the last boss will always kill you, so no matter how good you're holding the waves before that, if you leak the last boss, you will lose. Should you be able to kill him though, you will be able to save your code, which you can then use in the next round. And by loading in, you can, for example, pick certain of these uh, new models. So your farmer is then a tractor, which is just like a bulldozer, a red truck, sometimes you can use a sedan. Or you can also buy other things, which you get points for. As you can see, 15 rounds is over, we get another farmer upgrade. And I think pretty much with this explanation, you have a very clear understanding of how the map works and what you can do in this map. And this is pretty much it. As I said, this is a more in-depth explanation. There is obviously a whole lot more going on. Tower positioning, when to upgrade, when not to upgrade, how to go for the achievements, should you go for the achievements, and striking a balance between when you start selling the crops. For example, uh, pumpkins, if I had any, should be sold. Grapes, for sure, will be sold too. And knowing or learning which wave requires what or how many towers is very vital. Anyways, this is all I want to give you guys on the way here. I'm going to be cutting this video down short here. Hopefully this explanation will give you guys a clear idea 
on how this map works. I said initially what this game is for, what this game one offers. Actually, you can see what a leak looks like. We're just going to be using one live here. So this is it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you have any questions, if anything was unclear in regards to the map, feel free to let me know, and I will gladly provide any more in-depth info. If you want to see me play games like this live, then follow me on Twitch or any of the other social media that is linked below in the comment section. Not in the comment section, in the description. And as far as the rest goes, stay safe out there, my friends. And I will catch you guys next time.